Hi, hi. Good morning to you. Uh, you know, it's not it's not the best news to share with you this morning. Uh, air quality is not good whatsoever. I will show you the map, but let's pause here for one second. Just remember, folks, what we're going through right now is California's worst fire season on record. So the fact that we're dealing with smoke like this is is not unheard of. It's al almost expected, but this is going to take some time uh, for the smoke to clear out and for the fires to go out. Some of these big fires, they're not expecting any containment, full containment until about a month from now, just so we're clear on that. Let's talk about the air quality. This is going to be one of those days where, because it's cooled off quite a bit, that's why I'm wearing a jacket, and we have very little wind, gravity takes over, and gravity will take the smoke particles, soot and ash, and concentrate it at the ground level, and that's why we're seeing unhealthy air, if not hazardous air, for many of us, including hazardous air in the Delta area, Stockton and the Bay Area this morning. So we're just going to have smoke and haze issues. We will look for a warming trend, but you know what? If the smoke and haze sticks around like it did yesterday, uh, which I expected to, it dims the sun and we had highs in the 70s and 80s instead of the upper 80s like we were forecasting. So I have to give you a range because computer models have a very difficult time factoring in the haze when it crunches out the numbers. Looking at highs in the 80s at least, it's all a question of the low 80s or the upper 80s. It all depends on that layer of haze. Now going forward, I expect us to warm up through the weekend. And then we're going to be looking at some big changes going into next week. I think wind is coming back and that's just going to be a tough scenario overall. Walt, we're living through history right now. Again, one more one more piece of information. The largest, the third largest and the fourth largest fire in state history are burning at the same time right now. Yeah, how much more can we handle here? This is uh, this is a lot on everybody's plate. Mm -hmm. uh, Rob, thank you. Let's go to that uh, Bear Fire, which, as we mentioned, is now the North Complex West Zone Fire, destroying 2,000 structures. It continues to threaten another 4,200. Carlos Herrera is live in Butte County with an update. Carlos, any better today? The same, worse? How is it? You know, you know what, in terms of, uh, of flames, active flames this morning, a little bit better, but it doesn't mean that this fire is actually over. I'm in Oroville Quincy Highway this morning, right near Madrone Lake here. We drove up here. We did see a, a lot of devastation, uh, burned down homes. Uh, we, picked the, we picked a specific spot for our live shot this morning just to kind of paint the picture of what exactly firefighters are dealing with this morning on day three of this fire. This is one of the examples. So this is uh, this hot spot burning uh, here uh, near this highway. We've seen a, a lot of those on both sides of the highway. Now the concern here is that there are a lot of homes in this area. Some were, uh, you know, they were saved. Others, unfortunately, were burned to the ground. Number two, and it was probably the most important point about this, is that there's a thick layer of smoke here making it very difficult for us to see, for us to breathe. You can just imagine how challenging it is for firefighters as they continue to blaze, uh, to fight this blaze uh, this morning. Now, crews are focusing on protecting homes and structures in the area. They're putting out hot spots, especially on both sides of Highway 162. That's in Berry Creek, Feather Falls, Brush Creek, and Forbestown. Now, despite the destruction that I just mentioned, fire crews are optimistic today because of the favorable weather conditions and calmer winds. They're hoping to make a better handle on it today. But the concern is the smoke that I just mentioned. And that's now becoming the biggest factor for crews. Cal Fire says it's causing lack of visibility and making it a challenge both on the ground and in the air. We've not been able to use helicopters today because there was so much smoke. Mother Nature has not been our friend this year. There's so many fires across the state. And when this happens, there's only so many resources to go around. Uh, dozens of agencies will keep helping with the efforts on the ground today, including out-of-state teams from Michigan, Utah, New Mexico, and Canada. But overall, though, uh, it, it, there is a lot of optimism, especially on day three here, Walt. All right, Carlos, we'll look for any signs of good news here. Thank you. People evacuated from the fire checked in at the Yuba Sutter Fairground, but because of COVID concerns, there are no beds at the shelter. The American Red Cross is also asking people do not drop off physical items because of coronavirus. Instead, you can donate directly at Red Cross.